What a day. But we made it. We made it through another day. Hallelujah. And so we want to go to the Lord in prayer, give you a short word, and head straight to bed. Now remember, Sunday night I'll be on live on Facebook right here at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we'll just worry about, <laughs> be concerned with Sunday night. Amen. Thank you for everyone that's been tuning in to the Every Morning Before I Go to Work broadcast, our prayer time. And continue to let folks know on your Facebook social media outlets that they can go to my Facebook page, watch the videos, YouTube at Clay Cordell, email me their prayer request at CordellClayton at Yahoo.com, or they can send me the prayer request on my Facebook page at the appropriate post or leave their prayer request in the comment sections. Here is the title tonight of, of my uh, simple little uh, outline. I get it from Dr. James Merritt. He's pastors a large church down in Atlanta, Georgia. We're thankful. This came in the mail. I really didn't have time. It's very tough when you work like I do to have time to look for sermon outlines to help people that may watch the broadcast. So thank. Uh, so check out Dr. At uh, James Merritt at Touching Lives on. Uh, Yahoo or whatever or social media uh, so we want to talk about uh, you know God answering prayer what should be our response to when God is silent even though we prayed uh, what should be our attitude going through tough seasons and difficult circumstances and unwished and unwanted uh, troubles and trials. Uh, thankfulness is the last thing that any of us think about doing. But God wants us to be thankful, even during tough times. That's easy to preach, easy to teach, but hard to do. Uh, so we need to need to move ourselves out of the not-so-thankful camp into the thankful camp. I mean, Paul, I mean, Paul suffered. He was blessed, used of the Lord mildly, wrote 13 books of the New Testament under the Holy Ghost inspiration, built many, started many local churches, but yet he had a lot of rough times. There's something, uh, my wife taught a series of lessons in Sunday school on the life of the Apostle Paul and it was one thing about it, he didn't fear nothing. But he also was unmoved by bad things. That didn't stop him. And he didn't become bitter or mad or ungrateful. Let me tell you what he wrote in the Word of God under the Holy Ghost inspiration. First Thessalonians 5.18 Give thanks in all circumstances. <laughs> That's hard to do, isn't it? For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So we don't have to pray about that. And so this spoke volumes to me tonight. We're to be thankful, whether it's good times or bad times, up or down, mountain or valley, battle or blessing. We are to be thankful in all circumstances. We may not be, we may uh, not feel very thankful, but we should be thankful. We should have a life uh, full of gratitude. Uh, so how do we do that? I mean, I mean, let's get real here for about a few minutes. That's about all I got left in me to think today in terms of strength. The first thing we can do to practice a grateful or have the spirit of thankfulness and gratitude in our life is to be habitually thankful. In other words, it should be a habit. Um, nowhere in the scriptures does God say, feel thankful. Feel has nothing to do with it. Uh, feelings come, feelings go. Somebody help me here. Uh, feelings can be affected by how your body feels, how the weather is, by the temperature, uh, how you rested the night before, whether you're stock markets up or down many things cause us to feel but we're not commanded to feel thankful 
Uh, giving thanks has nothing to do with our feelings. Uh, you can be thankful even if you don't feel thankful. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's good or bad things happening or circumstances are good or bad. We can practice being habitually thankful. Uh, so let's do that. Regardless, make it a point in our life, whether we're having a good day or bad day, this or that or whatever, I am going to be thankful. I'm going to form the habit of being thankful regardless of what's happening around us. The second thing in order to be practice gratitude or to practice being thankful is to be happily thankful. So number one, we're to be habitually thankful. But number two, we are to be happily thankful. So we're to exercise gratitude. Uh, and when we do that, it has a, an incredible effect on our emotions. When we choose to be, we, it's a choice. When we choose to be grateful, then we experience God-given joy. That's the key to it. We read it out of the Word of God. Be thankful in all circumstances. So if God commands it, it's for our best. You don't have to pray, is it the will of God for me to be thankful regardless of the circumstances. We just read out of the Word of God, and I'll give you the verse again. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, give thanks in all circumstances. It goes on to say that's the will of God for you if you're in Christ Jesus, if you're saved. Uh, so God commands us, and if it's, it's for our benefit, it's for our best, because God knows everything. You know, grateful people are happy people. They really are. A grateful person will sooner or later be a holier person. And then a grateful person is not only a happier person and a holier person, but also a healthier person. A healthier person. Being grateful will have positive effects uh, because happiness and joy always follow a heart of gratitude and thankfulness. So number one, how do we practice being thankful in all circumstances and full of gratitude? Well, we've got to make a choice to be habitually thankful, regardless of our circumstances. Number two, we must be happily thankful. But then finally, in order to practice gratitude, we need to be humbly thankful. So no matter what we're going through right now, whatever burdens we're having to bear, whatever trouble or trials or tears or temptations that we're going through or test, uh, if, we're, if, 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 if we're completely ungrateful and there's not an ounce of gratitude in our heart, uh, we're out of the will of God according to the scriptures. We want to be in the will of God. Well, God says, be thankful in all circumstances. Paul says this is the will of God. He is not only saying this is what God desires for me and you tonight as believers in Christ, but he is also saying that God enables us to do it. When, if you're saved, you have God the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit living in your heart. God will help us and enable us to be thankful regardless of our circumstances. God never commands us to do anything that he doesn't give us the power to do it. So we can give God thanks in all circumstances because it's God's will for us to do that. And God wants us to do his will. So God, through the person and presence and power of God, the Holy Spirit in our life, as a believer in Christ will enable us to do it for the glory of God. So, it's God's will. And if it's God's will, that's God's best. And we need to form an attitude of gratitude. And if we do that, it'll change my life and your life too. It will shield us from sin, sin uh, 
cynicism, criticism, and pessimism. Uh, it will draw us closer to God. And because we're doing all we can to do the will of God and be thankful in all circumstances, definitely God will be drawn to us. So if we have a heart for God, we'll have a grateful heart. Our thankfulness will change the way we even see things. After all, one of the greatest ways to change how you and I feel about things is to change the way you see things. Lord, help me. That's my prayer tonight, to be this more of this type of person. I should have been doing this all along. And I hope you'll join me. New year, a new to do the will of God. I'm going to be a heart that's thankful, regardless of what's going on. I'm going to be habitually thankful. I'm going to be happily thankful. And I'm going to be humbly thankful, no matter what circumstances I'm going through. And if you and I practice that tonight, uh, God will flood our life with peace and joy like we've never experienced before. I hope that you enjoyed this small little sermon tonight. Add Tommy Tublin to the prayer list. He was in an accident at work today. Gracious day. My goodness. And transported to the Augusta Burn Center. I know. That's terrible. Okay, so let's anoint for him. I will be anointed. Anybody else have a prayer request out there quickly? I'm getting ready to uh, pray for Brother Tommy. God, Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. We pray right now for Tommy, Lord. We pray you'll help him with supernatural signs, wonders, and miracles. Help the doctors in the Augusta Burn Center to help him and help him, Holy Ghost, and help his wife and his family. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so I'm going to have to write his name down. I'm getting ready to sign off. I'm awfully tired. All right, Tommy. Tublin for healing. All right. And we'll keep you all abreast. Hope you enjoyed the outline tonight. And uh, I may share that again tomorrow with everyone that watches the morning broadcast. So we hope you've been enjoying all of the videos we put on Facebook and YouTube at Clay Cordell. We hope that you will uh, share share, share, where we can connect and reach new people on social media outlets. And I only have time for just two. <laughs> just, uh, um, and so, till tomorrow morning, if you follow me in the morning time, you know I put a video on there. And I appreciate it, sister. Rest up, preacher. Have a blessed night. And uh, Tommy Tubman, we're praying for him in the name of Jesus. And uh, so I'll be on in the morning before I clock in. And uh, a lot of prayer requests came in today. We pray in Jesus' name uh, that the Lord will take all those prayer requests that are added to the list in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So uh, until tomorrow morning or Sunday night at 7 p.m. right here, God bless you. God bless America. And God bless the Jewish people. We'll see y'all tomorrow morning.